What's up, Truth and Love? Welcome back to another segment of Let's Talk About It. I'm Secret. I'm Kim, or Kimmy to you. Yes. And today's sermon was part one of Kingdom Alignment series, When My Good Just Ain't Good Enough, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Miss Kimmy, tell me what hits you in your soul from this sermon. Um, having, I have to give God everything. I, he, I owe him everything. Everything yes. that I do, um, everything that he's blessed me with, I have to give it all to him. I have to give myself to him. I have to give everything to God. Yes, and that takes me to a point the pastor made about showing up empty. He said, I'm bankrupt. I owe him everything. Do we show up empty? You said you give him everything. How do you do that? I have to lay everything down for the Lord. I have to lay myself down. I have to put my pride down. I have to put, um, it's, are people going to judge me? I have to put mm. all of that down um, and say, Lord, I'm here for you. Yes, I'm yes. here for you. We have to refocus our, our, our perspective. It's about getting back in alignment. And what she said was important because it takes me back to the entitlement. One of the indicators of being poor in spirit is getting rid of your entitlement. Can you give me an example of something that we do or we deal with where we're entitled? Um, if I spin that a little bit, it is almost like um, I felt like I was entitled to make my own, plan, my, my own decisions, my own plan. So I had decided to move out of town, and I wanted to change my life, and I wanted things yes. to go a certain way, right? But God sat me down real quick, and he said, no, that, that's not the plan that I had for you. Ooh. So then my entitlement, I was thinking like, oh, you know what? I, I can do this. I'm going to do this, and I've worked it out on my own, so I'm going to do that. And, you know, he, he kind of shut me down, and he said, no, this is my plan for you. You're not going anywhere. Um, we're going to add two more kids to your family. You're going <laughs> to adopt some kids from birth, you know, yeah. so um, – Sometimes when you feel like you're entitled to make your own decisions, you're going to do your own thing, you're not. No, you have to go to God first. You have to say, Lord, is this what you have for me to do? Yes, and that seems so uncomfortable at times because we make up in our mind, I'm going to do this. Like you said, I'm going to move, I'm going to change my life. So we kind of take ownership of our life as though we don't belong to the Lord, as right. though we don't belong to him. So that leads me back to one of Pastor's earlier points of, are you a fan or are you a disciple? I am definitely a disciple. And I'm telling you from that, there's many experiences, but from that one experience, I learned a lot. And I know that I can't sit back and be a fan on the sidelines. I need to be a disciple of the Lord. The funny thing about fans, because I think they're supposed to be a game today. I don't know. I'm not a football <laughs> person. Somebody put in the comments what the game is. I don't know. But um, with fans, you know how fickle they are. They, they love you. You get that touchdown. Yeah, I love so-and-so. That's my guy. They buy the jersey. They, they decked out. And then the next day, he might have a bad game. I think it's speculation. Okay. <laughs> um, then they be like, oh, I hate so-and-so. I don't like him. He's a bad player. So how can we have the character of being a disciple versus being a fickle fan? Character is, you know, really getting into your word. If you don't understand, if you don't know, just go to the Bible. The Bible's going to show you. Sometimes, you know, you play the game of, let me just open it up and the Lord going to lead me. Yeah. And then also you need to do some studying as well. So I think to be in a disciple, you first need to know the word and then follow the word. Ooh, follow the word. That's hard. <laughs> Say that again for the people. <laughs> know the word and then follow the word. And if you don't know it, just continue to read a scripture every day, a chapter every day. And, you know, you'll get better as time goes. I think that goes back to distinguish, distinguishing us as a disciple instead of a fan. fan right. Because fan, you're not going to invest. But when you're a disciple, you, you invest. You take that posture of humility. You take that posture of gleaning from your teacher. There was a scripture that Pastor did where he sat and it said, Jesus opened his mouth and he taught them. Is there one thing that Jesus has taught you? He taught me to be patient. Oh, amen. And um, sometimes I want to rush um, yeah. certain things. Now, I like to be organized, and I like things to be in decent in order, but there's things that I do within my life and myself where I need to be patient. I need to wait on the Lord and truly wait on the Lord, not say I'm going to wait or that's <laughs> something that everybody says, yeah. but truly wait on the Lord. It's difficult because you know what you want to do and you want to get it done. You want to get it done so fast in your timeline, right, right. in your timelines. So can you tell the people, Miss Kimmy, one thing that you plan to really glean from this and apply to your life now? One thing that I think I'm going to continue to apply is know that I need the kingdom mm. and know that um, I need to continue to put my head in the Bible, get more um, information, um, 
learn to learn more about the Lord and more about the Bible and the teachings that God has in the Bible. Amen. Thank you so much, Miss Kimmy. And thank you all for rocking with us on another segment of Let's Talk About It. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs>